What is up guys, Andy Forrester, Dean Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Saucony Ride 17. Game changer is the word that springs to mind here. What a shoot and what a change they've made to the ride series to make this thing so much more enjoyable. I loved the 15, the 16 just sadly went downhill a little bit and the 17 has completely changed and we're gonna be talking all about that today. What we'll do is as always, we'll cover how I tested it, give you a technical overview and then go through my first impressions of the Saucony Ride 17. Quick disclaimer, this is a pair of shoes that Saucony sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they have no editorial control over this video they have no idea of my thoughts and they certainly will not see anything before you guys get to see it here on YouTube so with that being said let's dive in and tell you how I tested it so the ride 17 has had a little bit of a baptism of fire normally I like to do a moderate test a zone 2 and a zone 1 test an easy run uh, but this thing ended up being on my feet for my long run so this thing has had one heck of a test now in that long run what we decided to do or what I decided to do is do 40 minutes moderate or 40 minutes ish I hit an up uphill section and then I decided to push for 20 minutes around marathon effort and then I decided to finish off the run with around 25 26 minutes of moderate effort to take it up to around 1 hour 30 and then on the end of that I threw on 4 by 20 second strides if you want to see more of how I did that run the previous video on this channel talking about my long run with a 20 minute uphill marathon effort session is indeed on the channel I'm going to dive into a quick technical overview very simplistic shoes so it shouldn't take too long and then we'll get in to my first impressions. Let's start off by saying I went true to size in this shoe, UK size 13. As always with Saucony shoes, fits perfectly, so I definitely recommend true to size. We're talking about a 35 millimeter stack height in the heel, 27 in the forefoot, just like the Ride 15 and 16, meaning we have an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. And in my UK size 13, it comes in at 356 grams or 12.5 ounces. And as always, we'll work away from the heel counter, talk about the ankle collar, the tongue, the lacing, the upper, the midsole, and then move our attention to the outsole. So it's an engineered mesh upper, which runs all the way around, a bit of structure, a stout heel counter there with absolutely absolutely no flexion whatsoever that's going to keep you nice and locked in and that runs trace my finger here from here all the way up here around the top there and then back down the other side so you can see <coughs> excuse me at the very top there there's a bit of flexion on the top bit of cushioning where the pull tab is but most of it here is nice and sturdy. The cushioning in and around the heel counter area is very nice, nice and plush at the top, but very thin around the bottom. And that just aids to a really nice slipping, comfortable feel. I kind of feel like if you're a regular viewer who watches my Saucony shoe reviews, you kind of know what's coming because Saucony's form fit uppers, which is the technical term that they use for the way they design and get the upper to wrap around the top of your foot is just second to none. And I haven't found any other brand that produces better uppers in my opinion, than Saucony. And so it starts at the back here, really comfortable and really plush, not too crazy, but there's enough cushioning there to make it an enjoyable shoe. Medium plush tongue, so nothing crazy. It's not paper thin, but it's certainly not puffy and padded. And it's gusseted, which means it's attached on the medial and lateral sides of the shoe. Uh, there's a bit of elastic in there. Hopefully the overlay footage will show it. You can see here in the upper, we've got these open holes, um, which you can see right through. Uh, if I pull the tongue down like that, but when you pull the tongue up, it's covered because that's where the gusset, the elastic on either side, uh, attach um, the tongue to the side of the shoe. So that kind of covers up uh, those ventilation holes. And then moving to the front, you can see here, well ventilated at the front, lots of nice holes in the toe box area. I felt in general when I was running out on the long run, my feet were very well ventilated. My feet didn't get hot at all. It felt very comfortable, very nice and very enjoyable. So that gusseted tongue uh, combined with that, the, just the whole upper, it just wraps across the top of your foot. I was a little bit worried about the laces, but again, no need to, they were great. As you can see here, 
We're not looking at lace loops, we're looking at little bits of woven material uh, to create the loops themselves, but you get such a good lockdown in this shoe, just like every other Saucony. It's what I mean, I kind of feel like I, I should just press repeat on every Saucony shoe I talk about because they're all just so good uh, when it comes to the lockdown. And as always, you've got that extra eyelet there if you want to. Uh, for the runner's loop. Lace is a perfect length to do that as well. So yeah, overall, really good lockdown, really good feel, really good fit on the top. The big change, we have moved on from Power Run, the original midsole, we are now Power Run Plus. The same midsole that we find in the Triumph, and we're gonna talk about that shortly but that runs full length of the shoe, no plate in the shoe at all. This is just a full slab of Power Run Plus from heel to toe. What a joy, we'll get onto that shortly. Won't talk more about that now. And then as you can see here, we've got some rubber outsole coverage in a lot of the areas. I was gonna say in the high wearing areas, but it covers a lot of the shoe, just gonna to add to the durability there. And yeah, just grip was really good. You'll see from the footage, I was running in quite a wet day, wet conditions. It had a bit of tarmac in there, a lot of uh, buffed out trail, did the strides at the end on the tarmac. And yeah, grip was really, really good. So there we go. That's the tech in a nutshell. So let's dive in into my first impressions. How did I find the shoe? It was incredible. And I'm so delighted with this change. But let me explain something to you. It's not all amazing because let me uh, lay it out for you here. I'm trying to think of the top of my head. Ride 15. 307-ish grams around that area in my UK size 13. So that's a quite a lightweight shoe. And with the original Power Run, uh, which is a bit firmer, um, something that can be found on the Kinvara that I'm using, but the Kinvara seems to have a lighter sort of compound of Power Run. It feels different, it feels a bit poppier. So the ride version was a little bit too solid, a little bit firm. It was enjoyable, and I could go on zone one and zone two runs really comfortably, but it wasn't the most exciting shoe. I just enjoyed it because it was super lightweight. Ride 16 comes along, it gains a bit of weight, 324-ish grams, I think it was. Um, same power and midsole. And suddenly it went from being a nice lightweight shoe that I could do zone one and zone two stuff in it to a shoe that I didn't particularly enjoy. It just became too heavy. And I was like, well, maybe it should just become my easy day shoe. And then yeah, it just, it never materialized. And now, as you can see here, it is my walking shoe. Uh, and a very comfortable one at that. And we move forward to the uh, 17, and we're talking about 354 grams. So we're talking about a 34 gram increase from the previous version. But that doesn't matter for me anyway, because of this midsole foam. It's a game changer, and it's changed the complete um, uh, purpose of the shoe for me. And now what I can do in this shoe, I couldn't do in the 15 or the 16, despite it being heavier, I feel now suddenly the shoe is far more versatile. And I said it in my previous video, I will make sure I link to it. I talk a little bit about the shoe there uh, on the long run. It very much more is a more enjoyable Triumph. I enjoy the Triumph, I just struggled with the 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. It was a little bit too much. I did notice the slant on that shoe. Someone commented saying it's a little bit like an Ultra Boost. And I'm like, yeah, do you know what? It kind of is. It feels like there's a big chunk in the heel uh, with the Triumph. And as much as it's super comfy, this works for me so much better. And believe it or not, again, I think it's about four grams heavier than the Triumph. But what I was able to achieve in this shoe was pure enjoyment and a great run as well. So my moderate paces out there were like average 639 or 638 for the first 40 minutes or maybe even quicker than that, low 630s. And then I did a 20 minute marathon effort session uphill for three and a bit miles. My gap pace on that for the mile splits was 559, 559 and 607. Um, uh, average paces, like normalized pace was like 629 and 630s. So that was amazing. And then I wrapped it up with that moderate section at the end which again was 638 average per mile, I think, or around there. So it absolutely flew and it felt great doing it as well. And I said, I keep saying it, it all comes down to this midsole. This Power Run Plus should be, in my opinion, the minimum that Saucony put in their shoes. I genuinely feel like the Power Run works well in the Kinvara. It does feel like a lighter sort of compound. I do get a bit more pop and it does keep the shoe nice and light. It's definitely a different compound to what's in the ride. Either way, I'd love to see Saucony just evolve to keeping Power Run Plus in their base shoes, their daily trainers, and then use 
the power run pb and the power run hg and the other variations uh in the future models because i feel like this is the minimum that they should be sat at in my opinion i feel like the the power run the original one it's a little bit like react it's a bit better than react but it's it's not exciting so this was absolutely brilliant and i loved it and although it's heavier uh this foam is far more responsive and you just get so much more and that adds to the versatility of the shoe so i can safely say here that you're not just buying a daily trainer um you're not just buying an easy day trainer you can do stuff in this shoe like zone one and zone two work but you can also push it up to marathon effort it was no issues whatsoever for me to push marathon effort in this shoe it was brilliant if you want a non-plated option yes there are lighter ones out there but if you're looking to sort of cover that lower end of the spectrum and maybe tap into marathon pace, this is definitely one to check out. The strides, not so good in the strides. I felt like it was a bit too heavy and a bit too... I didn't quite get that zip at the end that I wanted to. Maybe that was fatigue from the run, who knows, but I can often do strides at the end of the run and the shoes can come to life or not. I wouldn't say this came to life at that point, but I'd say that this covered the first few sort of pace ranges of my training really, really well. So there we go. I kind of feel like I could waffle on about this for a while, but those are my thoughts. So the initial first impressions of the Saucony Ride 17. Big weight gain, big change for the better, in my opinion, which is gonna be interesting to see what happens with the Triumph. I'd love to see if that continues down the same road that it's going, because otherwise I feel you've got two shoes in the Saucony lineup that are far too close to each other, and then it will come down to, would you like a 10 mil drop or an eight mil drop? And for me, the 10 mil drop in the Triumph, it's very noticeable. Uh, this one is, is far more enjoyable for me. My sweet spot's around that six to eight mil. Uh, so this just works really well. I remember dropping my Triumph review and saying at the time, I can push uh, moderate runs in the Triumph easily. The foam was great and I love that shoe. And that's reflected in this one again, where you can just really, really push on. Power Run Plus, a really underrated foam. This is something special. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on the Saucony Ride 17. Changes for the good in my opinion but of course i'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think about the changes have you tried it are you going to try it january 1st i believe is the release date so i'd love to know if you guys will consider picking it up then that's it from me today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content i'll see you on the next one until then